In this tutorial series, we're learning how to build a cob house from the foundation all the way through the reciprocal living roof. And so far in this series, we've gone through a basic overview of the building processes, how to build a rubble trench foundation and earthen floor, as well as how to make a cob mix. In this episode, we'll be learning how to make cob walls, which will include shaping, integrating, trimming, leveling, mounting windows and doors, and more. We left off last episode on the morning of day seven when everyone was making their very first batches of cob. And once the cob was all mixed, we were ready to start building our walls. To prepare for our first course of cob, we added some screws and clay slip to the bottom of the door frame. And when you're embedding wood into the cob walls, these screws serve as miniature dead men that the cob can securely grip to as it dries. Clay slip is just a mixture of clay and water that helps to bond cob to materials other than itself. So we also applied a layer of clay slip around the entire top of the foundation before starting our first course of cob. You know, so I want to just firmly place the cob on the wall and using my thumbs and coming along with my hand on the outside and my thumb to make a nice clean line. And then I'm pushing the cob into all those little gaps and weaving the straw into there. But this is my hand that's holding it outside here so that it doesn't fall off the building. For the very first course of cob, we're establishing the connection between the foundation and the entire cob wall. So we have to make sure that we thoroughly integrate the mix into the gaps of the foundation by pressing it in with our fingers. Since we've made our cob into loaves, we can stack multiple loaves onto the wall before going back and integrating them into one singular monolithic mass. To create a single monolithic mass, we have to get rid of all the seams in between each cob loaf. And we do so by using our top hand to push through the entire mix as we guide and shape the mix with one hand on the side of the wall. Don't be afraid to really manipulate the mix with your hands. Pushing through the mix in this way helps to increase the tensile strength by sewing the strands of straw throughout the entire wall system. After a brief demonstration, we stacked up a ring of cob around the entire foundation as a team, and then we worked together on sewing and shaping the mix together. For this layer, we want to establish a strong foundational first run. So even though we're shooting for a one foot wide cobble at the base, we allow ourselves to build out to the full width of the stem wall to increase stability. You can see as everyone continues integrating the mix that the loaves disappear and that the ring of cobs starts to look more like the monolithic mass that we're shooting for. After the mix is well integrated, then you can start to focus on the actual shape of the wall. You want the sides of the wall to be plumb and the top of the wall to be roughly level, but here you aren't actually trying to achieve a smooth finish. Once the shape is roughly where you want it, you use a tool called a cobber's thumb, which is basically a rounded wooden dowel to again sew the mix together and fully integrate it into itself. This serves multiple purposes, mainly to structurally integrate the layers as you build up, but it also helps the cob to dry evenly and gives the next layer of cob something to key into, almost like building with Legos. We expected some rain overnight, so at the end of day seven, we covered up the building with our temporary tarp structure to keep the walls dry. We started day eight by making more cob, and in the meantime, we began planning where we would place our windows and doors. When you're building with cob, you build from the ground up, so it's important to think about your building design early in the building process. For this build, we had one large fixed window, a larger niche and shelf, a rounded fixed window, an opening window, another fixed window, and then some built-in closet and storage niches. As a general rule of thumb, you want at least two feet of separation between all major door and window openings on a load-bearing cob build. The roof is entirely supported by the cob walls, so these sections of cob between the doors and the windows form cob columns that support the weight of the roof. We also must take into consideration the placement of windows and doors based on where our primary rafters will land. Since there are 10 primary rafters, there are 10 points where the majority of the load of the roof will lie, and we do our best to space windows and doors so that the point loads are not directly over these weak points in the wall. 
Early in the building process, we measured to space out major openings at least two feet apart, and we used a five foot piece of string to measure where our primary rafters will land by dividing our total 50 foot circumference by the 10 rafters. After marking out our niches and windows, we were ready to continue building. As we bring more cobwebs over to the building, we continue stacking, integrating, shaping, and sewing through the mix. The goal is again to make the entire building a singular monolithic mass, so we try to remove as many seams as possible when building. Once we have our desired shape, we continue sewing through the entire mix from the top and sides with our cobbler's thumb or our fingers. It's important when building cob walls that your wall system is supported by the foundation underneath, but luckily cob is a very forgiving building material, so if you make a mistake and build out too wide, it's easy to remove problematic areas and reshape the mix while it's still wet. We place a stake back into the center of the building and we use a tape measure to make sure that our walls are staying inside our desired range. Here you can see we're embedding some small stones into the cob wall, and in this case the stones will help to structurally support our window that we will install a few days from now. Wet cob settles as it dries, so adding stones helps to eliminate sagging once the window is installed. For the rest of day 8, we continued making cob and building up our walls. We finished the day by celebrating another good day of work. Coming into day 9, we had built about a foot of cob all the way around the foundation, but our wall was a little bit wonky and needed to be trimmed up. We used our center peg again to create a line of best fit all the way around the entire building, coming as close to our 12 inch width and perfectly circular as possible. Once we had our new line established, we used machetes and saws to trim the wall to our desired 12 inch width. For this build, we're tapering the exterior wall, so we trim at an angle from the bottom of the wall to the outer 12 inch mark on the exterior, and for the interior wall, we trim and check for plumb using a level. At this stage, the cob wall is still shapeable, so to make the wall plumb, you can apply pressure to the top of the wall to push it out. Alternatively, if the wall is beyond the width you'd like, you can push the level into the wall and stop pushing once it's perfectly plumb. This indentation in your wall will now show you your plumb line and what areas need to be trimmed away. We continue trimming and checking plumb on the interior and continue trimming at a taper on the exterior. After working our way around, you can begin to see that the interior wall has a very nice plumb finish and there is a slight clean taper on the exterior wall that leads up to our 12 inch wide cob wall at the top. Once the trimming was finished, we were ready to start building again. And when you start a new run or course of cob on an existing portion of the wall, you always want to make sure that the top of the existing wall is slightly moist. This will allow the new cob and the old cob to have a stronger bond because the water makes the clay sticky again. On the morning of day 10, we continued discussing the design elements of the build and we installed our first set of bottle bricks in the cob wall. Embedding glass bottles into the walls is a beautiful way to allow natural light into the home. You first want to plan out your design for the placement of the bottles, then coat each bottle in a layer of clay slip to help bond the bottle to the cob wall. In this stage of the building process, you want to focus on securing the bottle strongly in the wall by shaping the cob in a way that grips the bottle on all sides. You can then go back and focus on the aesthetic finish during the trimming and plastering processes. We used lots of whole bottles for bottle bricks, and we also created some of our own cylindrical bottle bricks by cutting and taping two bottles together. They are then installed in a similar way by coating the bottles in slip and embedding them into the cob wall. 
On day 10, we also installed our first set of windows. We built each of our window frames custom to the size of the windows we had available using 2x6s, and each window frame has a header built into the frame with a minimum 4 inch overhang on each side. To prepare the frames for installation, we coated the entire frame in clay slip and added several nails into the frames, again to act as dead men that will allow the cob to better grip to the window frames. We also prepared the cob wall by trimming it to as level as possible before installing the window. The nails on the bottom of the window frame sink into the cob wall and hold the window in place. You then want to make adjustments until the window is plumb and level and add supports to hold everything in place as you build the walls up. We repeat this process for the opening window frame of leveling out the cob wall, installing the frame, checking for level and plumb, and adding supports. And this is how it looks after we installed the window into the frame. You can then begin cobbing around the frames as you work your way up with each course of cob. This live edge slab was installed to make a beautiful functional window sill on the opening window. As day 10 came to a close, we made sure to apply fresh clay slip as we embedded our window frames. We installed a few more bottle bricks and we finished one last course of cob around the entire building. On the morning of day 11, we met again to discuss the design and plans for the day before starting another run of cob. Here you can see as we finish embedding this bottle into the wall that we repeat the processes of integrating, shaping, and sewing through the mix just on a smaller scale since this portion of the wall is much thinner. We also continue embedding small stones into the wall as filler to be able to gain more height in the wall with less cob. Periodically throughout the rest of the build, we trim the interior and exterior walls with our cob saws. And as we mentioned for the interior wall, we're building a perfectly plumb or vertically level wall. And on the exterior wall, we're doing a 4% taper or half an inch per foot of height. We attached straight boards to one side of the level to check plumb on the interior wall and a board with a 4% taper on the opposite side so that we could measure our taper accurately on the exterior wall. We also embedded a series of 2x4s with nails on all sides except the interior, which will allow us to mount shelves into the built-in storage space further in the future. Since such a large portion of the wall was now taken up by window space, over the next few days we'd be able to gain height in our cob walls at a much faster pace. Over the weekend we installed our final window and made some more progress on our cob walls. And on day 12 we continued making cob, building up our walls, installing bottle bricks, and trimming our walls. We sculpted around this rectangular window to give it a rounded shape, and we also carved and sculpted some small niches using these small pieces of wood to support the cob as it dries. On day 13, we worked again under the tarp as it rained, and we continued working our way up the wall. These small branches were embedded into the wall to be used as coat hooks on the interior and the exterior of the home. We also embedded another series of 2x4s into the wall to allow for the installation of another shelf on this side of the building. We installed this shelf into the large niche inside, making sure that it was level before embedding it in cob as well.
We continued trimming on the interior and the exterior of the building as we worked our way up the wall. This is where we left off at the end of day 13. Day 14 was our second to last day of building with Cobb. We continued on making cob, building up our walls, and trimming and leveling as we built our way up. We trimmed and leveled the tops of our shelving supports, and we installed headers above the storage areas to distribute the weight of the walls and the roof above. As we worked our way up, we began embedding these roof tees into the very top of the wall. Embedding these every couple of feet would allow us to attach a bond beam to the top of the finished cob wall that we could then attach our roof rafters to, and this entire system helps add uplift protection in severe weather conditions. We made sure to embed them so that they were level, and for this building design, we wanted six inches of cob above all window and door frames, so we made sure that the tops of the tees were six inches above the window and door frames as well. We added some more supports as we sculpted the large niche inside. And lastly, we embedded some round wood pieces into the wall that would allow for hanging candle fixtures or pictures inside of the home. Day 15 was our final day of building with Cobb, and we spent most of the day building up to the top of the roof tees, as well as focusing on some trimming and detail work. We added some smaller roof tees to the top of the door and window frames, and as we continued working our way up, they slowly disappeared into the Cobb. We also carved out more of the niches and pulled the supports out where we could. After a few more final touches, we were finally done building our cob walls. In the same way that we make test bricks for cob, we create test plasters and apply them to the wall to see how they perform before making the best choice. In the next episode, we'll be learning about the sculpting and plastering processes, which are some of the most beautiful parts of the building process.